Now, this is lovely. I told you this is one of my favorite objects. This solves a mystery that you guys have learned since year seven, but you've never known why. It's just kind of been magic for you, okay? Make a little subheading, which is um, recurring decimals. Now, back in year seven, you learned how to take a recurring decimal, like for example, 0 0.747474 dot 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 and you learn to express it as a fraction. You can actually use some fancy algebra to do that, okay? But I think a much more elegant and nice way to do it is through what we've just shown here. Let me try and help you understand. Limiting sums, they only apply to GPs. I'll let you have a think about why they don't apply to APs. They only apply to GPs, which means I'm suggesting that this is a GP. That's a GP? It doesn't look like a GP. It doesn't look like one because everything's been added up, right? It's like a whole bunch of terms and they've all been collapsed. So what I want you to do is help me tease it back out and show me where the pieces come from, okay? So what I'm suggesting is this is made up of something plus something plus something plus something and you get smaller by a common ratio each time, okay? So for instance, see if you have a look at these two digits here, right? 0 0.74, what is that as a fraction, 0 0.74? It's 74 over 100, yeah? 74 hundredths. Well, that's the first piece. If you have a look at the next bit, 0 0.0074, what's that as a fraction? That's 74 over, now just be careful, right? It's actually 10,000, is it? It's 100 times smaller than this guy, yeah? And if you go to this last one here, no, no prizes, it's 74 over not 100 or 10,000, but a million. So there's the GP, right? But I know what a GP is equal to if I can work out all these pieces. Now I want you to watch, look carefully at what happened, right? Did you notice you got some cancelling happening? Because of this guy here, do you see that if this ratio is between not and one, actually between negative one and one, then that guy there, that fraction's always gonna go to zero, like we noticed here. It always goes to zero, okay? So if that part always goes to zero, what happens to this whole bracket up here? If this always goes to zero, then that always goes to one minus zero. Do you see that? Which is just one. Okay, so therefore, instead of a outside of 1 minus r to the n on 1 minus r, you get a times 1 over 1 minus r. But that just, that's nothing, right? So this is a over 1 minus r, if there's a limiting sum. So have a look at what happens. Tell me what a is. 74 over 100, there he is. Divided by 1 Minus, okay, look carefully. What's the common ratio? One over it's one over 100. Every time it's getting 100 times smaller. One over 100. Hmm. That looks a bit gross. You can do something with that, right? One minus a hundredth, that's going to be how many hundredths? That'll be 99 hundredths. But look, I've got hundredths here, I've got hundredths here. So just like you learnt four years ago, 74 or 99 is the fraction that gives you this recurring decimal. We couldn't tell you back then about geometric progressions because um, you would have thrown your books at us, okay? But now you know that there are such objects as these series that go on forever. Despite going on forever, you can express them in a finite way. And this formula, oh man, I keep doing this. This formula here, is what gives us that result, okay? So, um, in summary, when you've got a GP, and when its ratio is making numbers smaller rather than making them bigger, even if it doesn't really so, suppose the ratio is this, right, 99 over 100. Every time you multiply 99 over 100 by itself, it gets smaller, doesn't it? A little bit, but it gets smaller. 
The thing about doing things an infinite number of times is that even if it's super slow, this takes forever to get small, guess what? I've got forever, so it will also tend towards zero, okay? One last thing, you don't have to do this, it's just optional. I wanna illustrate for you, I wanna illustrate for you um, how this can be true, because that's weird, that's weird, infinite, on, and it's just one, okay? Um, you guys know what the unit circle is, right? You know what the unit circle is. This is clearly not a unit circle. This is a unit square. One times one, okay? Some of you have seen this before, which is fine. If you took your unit square and you divided it right down the middle, what would the area be of this rectangle over here? That area is, is a half times one. Yeah, so far so good, okay? Now, if I took the rectangle that was left over and sliced it down the middle, what would its area be? It's a half times a half, which is a, a quarter, right? But I can keep doing this. I can go a half here, a quarter here, that's an eighth, yeah? And there's a sixteenth, and one over thirty-two, and one over sixty-four, and I can go forever. If I did go forever, how much of the square will I cover? And the answer is, I will cover the whole square, which has an area of one times one, just like you found, okay?